Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. I am very, very pleased to announce that we have uh, made an arrest in this case. We've arrested Dylan Roth, R-O-O-F, from Lexington, South Carolina. Approximately 30 minutes ago, he was arrested in Shelby, North Carolina, during a traffic stop. I've had to make statements like this too many times. Communities like this have had to endure tragedies like this too many times. We don't have all the facts, but we do know that once again, innocent were killed in part because someone who wanted to inflict harm had no trouble getting their hands on a gun. Now is the time for mourning and for healing. But let's be clear, at some point we as a country will have to reckon with the fact that this type of mass violence does not happen in other advanced countries. This is the Savage Nation. Welcome. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Welcome to be part of the program today. You can call us 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 7282 as always check out our website it's michaelsavage.com you'll see all the latest news and headlines keep in mind all the stories that we talk about you can find them right there including of course the massacre that took place in charleston south carolina michaelsavage.com home of the savage nation borders language culture you can also see the latest book countdown to mecca by Michael Savage. Great Father's Day gift. Again, log on to the website at michaelsavage.com. Like to be part of the program. That is President Obama. As you heard him, he spoke early in the day talking about the tragedy, the horrific massacre that took place. The accused, an odd looking, confused 21 uh, year old Dylan Roth. Apparently, his father gave him. A 45 caliber handgun for his birthday. And right out of the box, President Obama, in talking about this, the shooting where nine people have lost their lives, immediately the president starts talking about gun control. And many of the headlines that are out there immediately start talking about gun control. And the president starting to compare our country with other countries. We're going to talk about that. President Obama saying, you know, other countries, this just doesn't happen, and with the frequency, we'll, we'll, we'll talk. And I'd like to hear your thoughts on some of the violence there. There's also talk about the patches that this 21-year-old Dylan Roth was wearing. Apparently on his Facebook page, he had patches that had to, uh, that connected with the apartheid. He also had the Confederate flag, reports say, on his license plate. And now there are talk of many people that that the flag should be banned, that the guns the guns should be banned. We're going to hear talk about guns and flags should be banned. If you're listening and you're down in that area, I would love to hear your thoughts on that, especially those that live in the area where now they're starting to, you know, there's obviously talk of a hate crime. This is obviously a deranged individual. And there is also talk that this is another example of terrorism. Do you regard him as a terrorist? There's an article in the Washington Post that now they start to break it out racially. How the, how if this were, you know, the fact that he's white, how he's treated, saying he must have a medical condition. If he were someone of color, they'd be saying that then he's a terrorist. How come he's not a terrorist? Do you regard him, this accused Dylan Roth, 21 years old, the shooting suspect, as a terrorist? One, eight five five. 400 Savage. one 855 You know, the president said this is, again, another time he has to come to the White House and talk about shooting. I, I don't see him as helping the situation with race. Once again, do you see the president as someone that is bringing the country together after this another situation regarding race or dividing? 
seems to just be a lot of dividing. It started when the White House started to wage war on the on law enforcement. And every single time there's been an incident, it seems to get flamed up even more and more. So there's talk about a hate crime, which it seems to be. And we'll play the quote. There was someone that spoke to uh, someone that was inside the church when this horrific massacre took place. But you're going to hear a lot about flags and whether or not Confederate flags should be banned in the South. But President Obama came right out about the guns and even comparing us to other countries. And we'll take your phone calls on it. one 855 400 Savage. one 400 7282 Let's start on line two with Bob on WMAL in Washington. Bob, you're first up on the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro. Hello, Bob. Today, these people have blood on their hands. For the last year, the media and the politicians have done nothing but inflame racial tension in this country. They've, it's done on a daily basis, every day, all day long. And for Obama to get out there today and look shocked that people are laying dead in the streets, this is what he has built. This is what the media has built. And they, they got some nerve acting all surprised. They got some nerve calling this a hate crime. Last, last month up in Baltimore, 20 black teenagers beat the living hell out of a whatever truck. That wasn't no hate crime. Everything's a hate crime to these people. But be careful what you ask for. You just might get it. Thank you for the call, Bob. 1-855-400-7282. Friends say they didn't know this Dylan Roth to be a racist. I never thought he'd do something like this, said high school friend Antonio Metz, 19. He had, quote, black friends. A young man with a blunt sugar bowl haircut. Boy, have you seen the photo of this guy, though, folks? I mean, doesn't he? He has that odd look in his eye. There's many different questions about the pre-group itself. Number one, they say the suspect reloaded five times. Number one. Number two, he walked in, said, who's the pastor, and then sat down for an hour. When you see a photo, and this he, he looks like there's something wrong with him when you just look at him. To think, I mean, you feel awful that this guy sat there for an hour, and they just went along. You think you'd be safe in a church. Right? You think you would feel safe in a prayer group in a church. He's just sitting there for an hour with that odd look, and he's waiting for them almost to finish. A young man with a blunt sugar bowl haircut. He used to skateboard in a Lexington suburb in South Carolina. He was younger and had even longer hair then. Childhood friend Joey Meek had seen Roth recently as Tuesday. She said she didn't know why he was in Charleston. He was not aware of him being involved in any church groups or anything racist. I don't know what was going through his head, said the mother. He was a really sweet, quick kid. He was quiet. He only had a few friends. It's always that type, the quiet few friends. Joey Meek alerted the FBI after he and his mother instantly recognized Roth in a surveillance camera image widely circulated. As a matter of fact, he was wearing the same stained sweatshirt that he was wearing at their house playing Xbox that day. It's stained because he had worked at a landscaping and pest control business. Let's go to Frank, who's listening on WJR in Detroit. Frank, you're up next on the Savage Nation. Hello, Frank. Hello. The president said that uh, other countries don't have this problem, but if you look at the Mideast, the Christians over there don't have any guns, and that's why they're so easily slaughtered by ISIS. Well, not only that. Thank you for the call, Frank. I, I, I'm going to read to you. I mean, there, there's a, an article out today that they, they don't understand why that beheadings are right now, 100 beheadings in six months, why the Saudi kingdom is on an execution spree. And we're one of the nations, you know, maybe the other nations have a leader that actually brings people together instead of flaming, inflaming the, the race situation. Do you think this is a matter of guns? What about if one of the people in the church had had a gun on them? Maybe you don't want to bring a gun to church. Now, the father gave him a gun for his 21st birthday, then you want to look at the parents. Why were they giving someone like this who seemed to be a loner? His uncle said he, quote, seemed to drift. But then the ability to reload five times. If one of those people had had a weapon on them, maybe you could have had a different outcome. one 400 savage You know, the president was trying to say this is a time to mourn, but he clearly started to go on the offensive against guns. Ken is listening on line four on WJR in Michigan. 
Ken, this is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, and you're on the Savage Nation. Hello, Ken. Hi. Uh, I'm wondering about this uh, young kid, uh, just turned 21 years old. He had a past history of the, the way he felt about black people. I'm wondering if his uh, father, who uh, knew all about him and how he was when he gave him that 45 handgun, I wonder if he didn't just tune him up and turn him loose. You ought to be checking that the father, too. Looking at him and saying, uh, why didn't you do something about this kid? Apparently the mother says he's just a sweet boy. Yeah. But the father gave him the gun, and three months later he's using the gun to take care of maybe the father's business. I don't know. Thank, <laughs> you, for the, you know, that, that, thank you for the call, Ken. Folks, anyone that uh, – I'd like to hear from some people in – if you're listening in the South about now this talk about they should ban – the confederate flags he had one on his license plate a 20 year old kid no friends he's got that lost look if you look at him certainly a loner who wears patches with an apartheid on your jacket never mind that's what you're putting on your facebook page um you know no real sense of direction and then just seemed lost and then they did he has been arrested nothing major though apparently uh trespassing and also had some drugs on him James is listening on line seven on WABC in New York. James, you're up next on the Savage Nation. Hello, James. How you doing? I um I'd like to ask what your take is because I know you didn't seem to really give a viewpoint on. Do you think he's a terrorist? If he is, he, if he isn't, because um it seems like it fits it fits the mold of a terrorist action. No, I I mean I, I don't I don't view him as a terrorist. He's a murderer, and he is someone based on any type of mental condition. I mean, someone that with who is driving around with the flag on his plate and the apartheid and obviously had something wrong with them. No, I, I view him as someone that I think will find uh, should not have been in possession of a weapon. But no, I don't regard him uh, as, as a terrorist with some of the terrorists that we have out there. one 855 Four hundred Savage one eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. Our phone number is that's our phone number. The website is michaelsavage.com. Again, this is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, and this is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now eight five five four hundred Savage eight five five four hundred seven two eight two Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call eight hundred B U I C O I N. At the um, conclusion of the Bible study, they just start hearing a loud noise. It's just ringing out, and. Um, the suspect had already wounded a couple of individuals, I'm one of the survivors, and she said that he had reloaded five different times. And um, her son was trying to talk him out of killing people, and he, he just said, I have to do it. You rape our women, and you take taken over our country, and you have to go. I've had to make statements like this too many times. Communities like this have had to endure tragedies like this too many times. We don't have all the facts, but we do know that, once again, innocent were killed in part because someone who wanted to inflict harm had no trouble getting their hands on a gun. Now is the time for mourning and for healing. But let's be clear. At some point, we as a country will have to reckon with the fact that this type of mass violence does not happen in other advanced countries. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, inviting you to join the program today, 1-855-400-SAVAGE or 1-855-400-7282. The first you heard, that is someone who uh, has a relative who was inside that church when this horrific shooting took place. It is horrible for these Nine victims, their families, a senseless act of violence, obviously a demented person, uh, obviously racially motivated. We don't know that much about this individual, but they did get him. So they, he is in custody and hopefully get more answers out of this. Let's go back to your phone calls. Let's go to line two. Steve is listening on KSFO. Steve, you're up next on the Savage Nation. Hello, Steve. Hey, 
how's it going? Uh, I just heard that you don't really know much about what's going on. I was wondering if, rather than blaming the gun so fast, do you know anything about what drugs he was on to maybe turn him into such a, a ticking time bomb? If maybe this is, it looks like, uh, I mean, to me personally, it looks like another Sandy Hook job. I mean, the lines that are coming out of him seems very cliche, like, oh, you know, I'm afraid of the black people. I mean, uh, yeah, all these black people are, are going to take my women. I mean, that's that's just, it's one of those things that came out from the 90s that, it's just one of those joke lines, you know, just to stir everyone up, just to make, you know, the, the common, uh, you know, you know, southern... No, you keep saying, you know, you know, I know, I don't know what you're talking about. No, it has nothing, no semblance to Sandy Hook. We don't know if he's on the spectrum in any way. Uh, the gunman in, in Sandy Hook didn't say anything. Uh, joke line, no, I, 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 I don't understand that. And and as far as, we'll, we'll find out, he was caught with some drugs on him, but it, it, it's a drug that, that has to do is, is almost like a painkiller. I mean, nothing uh, like a hallucinatory type drug or anything like that. Let's go to line seven. Tom is listening on WABC in New York. Tom, this is John DiPietro, and you're on the Savage Nation. Hello, Tom. Hi, I just want to make a point about the Confederate flag. I, I'm from the North. I've never been in the South, never lived in the South. However, the Civil War was in 1861 to 1865. We were a nation in 1776. So slavery flew under the American flag for 79 years, and nobody said a word. In 1865, when the 13th, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the 13th Amendment came and freed the slaves, for another 100 years, black people were still for the lack of a better word, slaves, because they weren't allowed to do anything. I know, but Tom, if you thank you for the call, but if you you take a look at this 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 suspect, uh, this Dylan uh, Roof uh, Ruff, I mean, he looks lost to begin with. So you know, you have a twenty year old kid that doesn't seem to have any direction, going anywhere. He's wearing an apartheid jacket. I I, I mean, all those things separately, and then the, you know, he's got the Confederate flag on the license plate. Again, everything separately. I'm sure there are plenty of people who do that, that that aren't violent in any way. And then the father gives him a gun for his birthday. There is something, I think, mentally wrong with this person. We'll take more of your phone calls. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. John DePietro sitting in. This is The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. It is in our power to do something about it. I say that recognizing the politics in this town uh, foreclose a lot of those avenues right now. But it'd be wrong for us not to acknowledge it. And at some point it's going to be important for the American people to come to grips with it. And for us to be able to shift how we think about the issue of gun violence collectively. That is President Obama. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're welcome. That was President Obama speaking earlier at the White House. You're welcome to call the program 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. Remember, check out the website. It's michaelsavage.com, where right now you can purchase Dr. Savage's new book, Countdown to Mecca. It is available right now online at the website or of course you could buy it uh, online or through Amazon or any type of uh, bookstore in your particular area and many other articles, news, everything you need right there at michaelsavage.com While earlier this year the accused gunman Dylan Roth charged early a trespassing charge Lexington County, South Carolina according to the arrest warrant he was approached by a police after a store complained about him after search, police found an unlabeled pill bottle with, quote, multiple orange in color strips believed to be Suboxone, a drug used to relieve painkiller addiction. Roth told police that a friend gave him the drugs. If you have ever taken that and you have uh, some experience or maybe it uh, you know, made you act a certain way or what any type of side effects... Suboxone. Call up call up to the program. I'd like to hear someone firsthand. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. There are many different uh, articles. I saw in, uh, Anthea Butler, 
who wrote in the Washington Post that listing, she writes, quote, listen to major media outlets, you won't hear the word, quote, terrorism used in coverage of today's shooting. You you won't hear the white male shooter identified as 20-year-old Dylan Roth described as a possible terrorist. And if coverage of recent shootings, white supremacist, any indication, he never will be. Instead, the go-to explanation for his actions will be mental illness. He'll be humanized, called sick, victim of mistreatment, inadequate mental health resources. Activist Delray McKisson noted this morning while discussing Roth's motivation, an MSNBC anchor said, we don't know his mental condition. That is the power of whiteness in America. No, that's a fact that we don't know what his mental condition is. Trying to find out someone's mental condition. I don't, I don't think that plays into race. The president obviously, and, and listen, the, the gunman is quoted allegedly saying, I'm here to kill black people. So it is race. And his actions, as far as what he was wearing and what he was posting and the flags and the apartheid jacket, certainly point to race. And some of the comments he allegedly made of why he was there and had to do it certainly point to race. But I don't think it's ready just yet that he's a terrorist. And the fact if someone says, listen, there is something mentally deranged by someone that would do something like that. The same way there is something mentally wrong with someone that would behead another human to, quote, you know, support ISIS. Let's go to line three. Doug is listening on WVNN in Alabama. Doug, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Doug. John, thank you for having me on. Very welcome. Uh, John, it hasn't been that long, I, I don't know, a year, maybe a year and a half. It, there's, if I remember this right, it was a mega church, a large church, and a man opened fire in this church. And, and my memory may be wrong here, but I want to remember that it was a lady, maybe that was off-duty deputy, that had a weapon, and stopped the individual. In yes. The church. Do I remember that right, John? I believe so, yes. All right, and just one last comment, John. This is a, it, hey, if, if he said what he said and did what he did, hey, he did it because those people were different than him, and he saw that in a different way. And that's not right. It's not any more right than if you look at Florence, Alabama, in the last two weeks, you will see a group of 30 or so blacks attacked a white family, a man, his 14-year-old son, and then busted the window out of the van, injuring a child under the age of 10. And nobody's called that a hate crime yet. In fact, they're still trying to decide that if it is. But the man was tasered several times and beaten, but nothing but other than he was the wrong skin color. Hmm. It doesn't matter if which color you are. That's wrong. It doesn't matter if it's white's doing it or it's either way. It's wrong either way, and it needs to be held accountable. Absolutely, Doug, and thank you for the call. And to be clear, someone goes into a church where people are innocently praying and to gun down and massacre nine innocent people. Anyone that would do that to me is deranged, whatever their motivation may be. I mean, it is horrific. Uh, on On the one hand, at least good, there is the death penalty. He should receive the death penalty. Let's go to line five. Bert is listening on WDRC. Bert, this is John DePietro, and you're up next on the Savage Nation. Hello, Bert. Hi, thanks for taking my call. Very welcome. I'm looking at this as two issues. One, the White House and this president being an opportunist, and once again, taking the opportunity, even though all of the facts are not in, to attack the Second Amendment. And I guarantee if there were other people in that church who were pointing pistols at this punk, that he would have thought twice. And the second issue is the same problem as him coming out in a nanosecond against the Cambridge policeman in Cambridge break, uh, the act, acting stupidly. This is the president who can come out in a nanosecond about an issue that he's trying to tear down the Constitution Whereas, what have we heard about Benghazi? What have we heard about the IRS? What have we heard about the shooting of the border guard? Well, that's going to take research. Thank you, thank you for the call, Bert. You know, if you own, we don't know what the weapon was just yet, but his father had given the, the gunman 
a 45 caliber for his, his 21st birthday. If you own one, they're saying right now, a report is one of the witnesses, we'll play it again, was that he, he loaded and reloaded five times. If you have a 45 caliber, if you just call up, I'd like you to hear you say how long something like that w- would take to to reload if in fact he did reload five different times during this shooting rampage call us at 1-855-400-SAVAGE 1-855-400-7282 let's go to jeff on line nine who's listening on wmal in washington dc jeff this is john DePietro, and you're up on the savage nation hello jeff i had a comment about uh I'm attacking once again the Second Amendment. You know, he, he, it's always a political agenda, especially with uh, a lot of the liberals in this country to attack it. But he wants to go down the road uh, about the race racial issue, which that could very well be the case. All I have to say is I, I myself am, am uh, American Indian, and I was always taught by my grandparents the difference between being a minority and an oppressed minority is the Second Amendment. Hmm. You do have a right to defend yourself in this country, and you do have the equal right as anyone else. So instead of attacking that, I think he needs to move on and get off the political issue all the time about the Second Amendment. Thank you for the call, Jeff. I mean, w- one thing. I mean, is there anyone... It's amazing right now how much race is nonstop in the news. Race is nonstop a problem in the country. And, and the, the president, to me, doesn't seem to do anything to to bridge that gap or bring anything together. The, the week started with, you know, the, the, the fraud. The woman from Spokane, uh, Spokane, Washington, the fake African-American head of the NAACP saying she, she thinks she's black or she identifies of being black. And then... It, it is non-stop racial unrest. And once again, I, I don't I don't know how the White House is going to try to bridge the gap on this either. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. Let's hear. Let's play cut two. This is someone. This is a woman who spoke apparently with someone who was an eyewitness who was right there in the church. At the um, conclusion of the Bible study, they just start hearing a loud noise. It's just ringing out. And um, the suspect had already wounded a couple of individuals. I'm one of the survivors. And she said that he had reloaded five different times. And um, her son was trying to talk him out of killing people. And he, he just said, I have to do it. You rape our women and you take taking over our country. And... You have to go. Let's go to line seven. Jeff is listening on KKOH in Reno. Jeff, you're up next on the Savage Nation. Hello, Jeff. Hi. Um, Two points. First of all, the president said that uh, there have not been episodes like this in other countries. Had he gone to the the march in Paris, he would know that it happened there. He'd also be unaware, I guess, that it happened horrendously in Norway, uh, where the uh, man went to the island and shot youths. Uh, one after another and reloaded many times. So these things do happen in other countries. And number two is I'm concerned about that the uh, the uh, anti-depression drugs, in rare cases, uh, very often these shooters are on antidepressants. And I wonder if this young man will find out he was. I think they help many people and probably decrease the overall suicide rate, but it could be in the wrong person's hands that it leads to tragic events. Excellent point, Jeff. Thank you for the call. I mean, there, there's something, obviously, we're going to find out, I think, this uh, Dylan Roth, something, you know, d- definitively, you know, mentally wrong with a 21-year-old or anyone any age, but especially 21 years old, and to go in and commit such a heinous crime. Let's go to line eight. Mark is listening on WABC in New York. Mark, this is John DePietro, and you're up next on the Savage Nation. Hello, Mark. Yes, um, yes. Thanks for having me on the show. You're welcome. Uh, I got two points. Um, the first point is, um, you know, it's horrible what happened here. Definitely horrible. But I think that this kid was coached by somebody, and and, and what happened is, um, you know, one of the pastor is a politician. I think they coached the kid to uh, to kill this guy. 
because he's a politician, a black politician like the president is. And, you know, it's just crazy. And the other point is the liberal media is putting this country in a hole that, that it's almost impossible to come out of. The more they keep broadcasting all this racial stuff, we're going to have riots left and right. It's crazy. This president does not care, does not care about peace. He wants to keep egging it on and egging on, and the liberal media definitely eats it all up. And it's horrible. I've, you know, I remember the riots in the 60s. It's, it's nowhere near as bad. As, I mean, it's bad now than it was then. I mean, this guy is creating havoc, this president. It's horrible what happened to those people. No, Mark, question. Mark, I, I agree with you, Mark. Mark, isn't like it, it, it's amazing the, it, the the entire nation right now it is it is nonstop racial unrest, and I, I don't see the president's not doing doing anything to to stop it or or make things better. And not only that, Mark, how about just the man that was just arrested in New York? He's gonna, you know, help ISIS with an attack on law enforcement agent agencies. I mean, between ISIS recruiting people online and now. You know, you have young nuts like this that are going in. I mean, Mark, doesn't the country seems completely out of control right now? I think the racial stuff and the terrorism is all locked in. Thank you for the call, Mark. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. Let's go to line one. Dave is listening on KKOB in New Mexico. Dave, you're up next on the Savage Nation. Hello, Dave. Good afternoon. You know... Every time we have a situation like this where some people pay with their lives, this president automatically comes out with a hate crime, and his uh, attorney general is likewise. When is he ever going to admit the hate crimes are mostly in Chicago, Baltimore, New York? These people, mostly young people, are being killed left and right. And he always blames it on the citizen that has the right to carry arms. What about going into these areas with these ghettos and search and seize and get all these weapons away from them? He never says anything about that. Maybe he should take out time in the uh, five times a day that he prays. Uh, I know I get so angry at this guy. He's an imitation black person. He never. Uh, be, uh, he was 11 years in a madrasa outside of this country. He don't know what the hell these people are going through. He's a, a wannabe uh, community. Right. Or- well, you know, one of the problems that we we definitely have is the people who should be preventing uh, sick nuts, like the gunman in this situation. Other examples is the police, and the police have been under attack, trying to protect themselves. We'll take more of your phone calls. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. If you want to read the latest on this story and other stories, remember, log on to the website. It's michaelsavage.com. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, and this is The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Let's go right to your phone calls. Steve on line three is listening on WABC New York. Steve, you're on the Savage Nation. Hi, John. Thanks for taking my call. I'm um, I'm actually on a similar medication. It's called Subutex. the active ingredient in both Subutex and Suboxone is the same. It's called buprenorphine. The only difference being that the Suboxone, which this kid was caught with, is more for addicts. It contains an opiate blocker as well as the opiate itself. Um, so that way, if the addict was to try and use the uh, euphoric effects of the block. Now, I can tell you from my own experience, that the first few weeks when you start taking a medication like this, you um, can become impatient, ornery. Um, when you first start taking it, you know, you could say your fuse is almost, you know, cut in half. Uh, sure sounds that way. That's what the alleged shooter was on. Visit our website, michaelsavage.com. Again, John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. This is the Savage Nation. 
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. I've had to make statements like this too many times. Communities like this have had to endure tragedies like this too many times. We don't have all the facts, but we do know that once again, innocent were killed in part because someone who wanted to inflict harm had no trouble getting their hands on a gun. Now is the time for mourning and for healing. But let's be clear. At some point, we as a country will have to reckon with the fact that this type of mass violence does not happen in other advanced countries. At the um, conclusion of the Bible study, they just start hearing uh, loud noises just ringing out. And um, the suspect had already wounded a couple of individuals, one of the survivors, and she said that he had reloaded five different times. And um, her son was trying to talk him out of killing people, and he... He just said, I have to do it. You rape our women, and you're taking over our country, and you have to go. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Welcome to join the program by calling us today at 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. That was uh, a woman who had spoken, as you heard, with an eyewitness and also President Obama, the events in Charleston, South Carolina, earlier today. You want to read all the latest stories about it? Log on to the website, michaelsavage.com. You can see all the top stories. In addition to that, you'll see Michael Savage's new book, Countdown to Mecca. It's available right now. Remember, log on at michaelsavage.com. We're starting to learn a lot more about this uh, suspected gunman, Dylan Storm. Now, his last name is spelled R-O-O-F, but it it rhymes with cough, so it's Dylan Storm Roth. Uh, The Facebook profile picture, New York Times, chosen thick with symbolism, shows a scowling young white man against a distinctly southern backdrop, swamp dripping with Spanish moss, black jacket adorned with two flags, one from apartheid-era South Africa. By the way, if you know of people that wear that particular patch, Give us a call. The other from white-ruled Rhodesia. They've been adopted as emblems by Monday white supremacists. Law enforcement officials identified Roth, 21 years old, as a suspect in the mass shooting at the African-American church in Charleston. Wednesday night, left nine dead, including the pastor, Pastor Pickney. Roth was arrested in North Carolina. A cousin of Pickney had spoken to witnesses, Sylvia Johnson, that's the woman you heard, told NBC the gunman entered the church, asked for the pastor, sat next to him for an hour during Bible study before opening fire. I have to do it. You heard, you just, you, well, you heard Ms. Johnson say that. Uh, the shooting and be investigated as a hate crime. His current address is listed in public records as East Over South Carolina. Now, if there's anyone listening that knows of someone, just tell us a little bit about East Over South Carolina. Give us a call, 1-855-400-SAVAGE. Very small town southeast of Columbia with an overwhelmingly African-American population. On Facebook, many of his 88 friends are black. He attended high school in Lexington, about 40 miles west of Eastover. Now, someone that um, went to high school with him said that he was like a major drug addict in high school. Quiet, kind of seemed like a normal kid, but was a major drug addict. And um, when reporters went to the property today, more than a half dozen cars from Richland County Sheriff's office parked along the dusty driveway outside the two-story frame home in Eastover. That's apparently where his parents live. A man in a straw hat came out of the house, told the reporter, make your way right back where you came from. Get off this property right now. But in uh, high school, they just said that he was just kind of lost, a little bit of a drug addict, and he had been arrested. 
for apparently uh, a drug that he didn't have a prescription for. It was acting kind of odd at a mall. And now this Daily Beast reported John Mullins went to high school with Roth, described him as a heavy drug user who told racist jokes. He was kind of wild. He used drugs heavily a lot. Well, you heard President Obama saying we have to do something about the uh, amount of drugs in this country, excuse me, guns in this country. There's also others saying that we need to ban those flags and the Confederate Confederate flag that he also had as a license plate. Let's go out to your phone calls. Line four is Lance, who's listening on WBAP in Dallas. Lance, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Lance. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, regarding a 1911-style firearm, the standard magazine capacity is seven. Some of them are made, they hold eight, so you're talking one or two more rounds than a six-shot revolver. And an average person with any training can do a magazine change in about two to three seconds. So you're looking at probably 45 shots if you went through five magazines, if they were loaded all the way at yeah. capacity. And, and that's someone who, would you have to say, be a little skilled? I mean, you know, he just got, apparently, his. we don't know if that was the weapon he used, but the, the, the gunman apparently received a birth, uh, birthday gift from his father for turning 21 back in April. So, he, he, I mean, would you, would you be able to that quickly learn how to, you know, load and reload five times in, in that quickly a fashion? Well, if he's incessant about it, I imagine you could, but it would still maybe four or five seconds for a magazine change. My my two questions on what on earth possessed a family member to give this kid a gun when he has issues like that, and I wish somebody in the church would have been armed to stop him. Thank, thank you for the call, Lance. Uh, let's go to line five. Tom is listening on WMAL in Washington, D.C. Tom, you're up next on the Savage Nation. Hello, Tom. Hey, bud. Yeah, his dad's going to be in trouble because he's not supposed to give, you're not supposed to give a registered firearm to anybody. It's got to go through an FFL dealer where it's got to be transferred from one person to the other, and he's got to go through a waiting period or a background check. So the boy should have never got the firearm. And the other thing, too, that makes me mad is they always blame the firearms. You don't blame, them, blame a car when a drunk driver hits somebody and kills somebody. It's not the firearms' fault. It's the people's fault. I've seen right. bad people raise good kids. I've seen good parents raise bad kids. It's, it's just the human factor. That's all it is to it. And like the other caller said about the shots and all, he's right. It doesn't. It, you got to train and train to get used to changing the magazines. And as for the woman... I, I really don't have a lot of heart into what she said because you got to remember the shooting with Darren Wilson. How many people come out and said he had his hands up and lied and said that he did this and he did that, and when they got done with the evidence, they found that nothing matched what they said. So you've got her word against what went on. you got to wait for all the evidence to come out. Wait well, the, the, it, Tom, a couple of things. Number one, I mean, the woman on the tape, she, she's, she sounds and seems very credible and just repeating what she had been told, number one. Number two, I don't understand. If, if he turned 21 years old and the father gave him this 45 caliber as a birthday gift, and let's just say everything was registered, I'm not sure why the father would then uh, get in trouble, especially, I I mean, who if you're listening, in South Carolina, how strict are the gun laws in South Carolina, one good thing is they they do have the death penalty in South Carolina. But uh, I think we need to, you know, his actions certainly they they sound. If you if you look at the picture, if you've seen the photos of him, I mean, I don't know. He certainly looks like he's on drugs. I don't know if he is on drugs, but he certainly looks like that he's on drugs. Let's go to line eight. Uh, eight. Annette is listening on WJR in Detroit. Annette, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Annette. Oh, John, I just have two points to make. You know, we as a nation have to get together and say, we're going to treat these mentally ill people, regardless of race or nationality. We have to spend the money because there are people that are mentally ill, and we as a country do not want to acknowledge it because we don't want to spend the money. We turn people out to sleep under bridges, whatever. If they don't have the resources, oh, well. We don't give the resources for the uh, people to get help because the law enforcement can't keep these people. No, we have to let them go. The families go for resources, and they're told there is none. Well, when you you talk about resources in that, but what about, uh, as someone mentioned to me earlier, the HIPAA laws protect maybe law enforcement from knowing if someone uh, is off or on heavy medication or shouldn't be allowed to have a firearm? And My answer to that is, when we decided about the HIPAA laws, there was exact reasoning we did. 
There is nothing that says, hey, you know, maybe we'd better reexamine this law because it's not working or it's not working to our benefit or it's not working to the extent that we want it to because we are putting innocent people. You have people in church, God-fearing people that go and think they can go and come home at night. They should not have to fear that. No one should have to fear that. That's our responsibility as a nation. When we know we have a child, and as a mother, I could not set my child out if I knew I had poured this much hatred in his heart. Do you think that this boy went 21 years and just decided one day all of a sudden he didn't like black people? I don't think so. Well, I, it, it, it go, thank you for the call on that, folks. It, go, it goes beyond that. I mean, he, he's got the Confederate flag on the license plate. Never mind wearing the apartheid flags. I mean, who walks around? Imagine, like, you're 20 years old. You don't really even have a job. He works, I think, in landscaping, pest control. He's even wearing a dirty stained sweatshirt. And the father decides to give him a gun for his birthday. I mean, uh, the, the father has some culpability here as far as, you know, what about him seems stable in any way? one 855 Four hundred savage one eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. Let's go to line nine. Ralph is listing on WABC in New York. Ralph, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Ralph. John, great to talk to you. I'll tell you one thing. I'll leave out the president's remarks because again, they're useless. They're inappropriate, and he jumps and he and he jumps the gun, if you will, pardon the pun. But uh, you know, you want to weed out these people in a free society. Um, it's virtually impossible. You cannot, you cannot vet everyone. It's not possible. You have this. I'll give you a common denominator that each one of these crazed individuals uh, usually possess. They're addicts with the social media. They're addicted to psychotropic drugs, and they have this um, identity crisis where they have to, they seek to achieve either posthumously or. In this case, uh, sorry to say, this this uh, this freak is still is still breathing. Uh, to achieve some sort of celebrity after the fact, we cover this, John, after the fact, like we're covering uh, a baseball game, like we're in, in a certain sense to a warped individual, where we're we're heralding this 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 maniac to a certain point. That that name, Ruff, however you pronounce it, will never be forgotten, and that's unfortunate. And these for these losers, John. These kids that have nothing else, this is their moment to shine, as yes. thick and uh, warped as it may be, John. No, I, I, Ralph, I think you're right. And the same thing with these losers is what they are. The same ones that are online who were then being, quote, inspired by, by ISIS. You know, years ago, they would just be harmless losers living in the parents' basement. Now they go online, and they suddenly feel like a somebody. one 855 400 Savage. Uh, Piers Morgan is also ranting about this. We'll tell you about that. We'll play more of the president's comments and take more of your phone calls. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, and you're listening to the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. I've had to make statements like this too many times. Communities like this have had to endure tragedies like this too many times. We don't have all the facts, but we do know that, once again, innocent were killed in part because someone who wanted to inflict harm had no trouble getting their hands on a gun. Now is the time for mourning and for healing. But let's be clear. At some point, we as a country will have to reckon with the fact that this type of mass violence does not happen in other advanced countries. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Remember our website, log on. It's michaelsavage.com. Find out about Dr. Savage's great new book, Countdown to Mecca. It's available right now. Makes a great Father's Day gift, by the way. Makes a tremendous Father's Day gift is Countdown to Mecca. You can also see links to all different types of stories you can't get anywhere else. All the news you need is at michaelsavage.com. That's President Obama speaking at the shooting in Charleston, South Carolina. I'm reading right now, according to CBS News reports, early this year when police searched this Dylan Ruff, uh, Ruff 
And again, um, Roth, R-O-O-F, rhymes, uh, rhymes with cough, Roth. He was acting suspiciously inside a, a bath and body works store. They found orange strips that Roth told officers uh, suboxone are narcotics used to treat, to treat opiate addiction. If you have any experience with this, give us a call. Maybe you're a doctor or maybe you're a pharmacist or maybe you just... Or maybe you're a salesperson, or just maybe a pharmacy salesperson, I mean, or a drug salesperson representative, or maybe you've been on it. It's because now we're reading, Suboxone is a habit-forming drug connected with sudden outbursts of aggression. And on certain websites, they're posting, uh, they talk about one person said how the husband became addicted to Suboxone and was ruining their life. Another person said, horribly aggressive towards the partner. After taking 8 milligrams of Sigoxone, a website devoted to horror stories about the drug featured a post by a woman whose husband obtained a gun, began violently beating his 15-year-old son after taking Suboxone. So if you have any experience with that, uh, give us a call. Maybe you've never called before, but you have some uh, information or just an interesting perspective on that. one 855 400 Seven two eight two. Let's go out back to your phone calls. Jesse on line one is listening on KKOB. Jesse, you're up next on the Savage Nation. Hello. Yes, hi. Um, my experience with the box, and I, I've been on the box now for about two years. But prior to that, I was a raging drug addict. And uh, once I was uh, once I was put on on um, Suboxone, it um, it calmed me down, and I've been able to maintain a very productive, healthy life with it. And I don't I don't really see that there'd be any kind of correlation between um, just based on my experience between what happened and uh, with this guy. And um, I think it's I think it's quite a bit uh, quite a bit more in the background. I think there's probably a lot of hatred in this family. I think that uh, the, the kid had other problems besides uh, just the use of box, and I think there was probably other drugs involved. You didn't have any type of violent outburst, Jesse. I've never had a, a violent outburst no. on this. Hmm. All right. Well, we'll talk about it more. Again, log on to the website, michaelsavage.com, and we'll take more of your phone calls. One eight five five four hundred Savage coming up. You're going to hear someone describe what an eyewitness told her being inside that church. This is John DePietro sitting in on the Savage Nation. At the um, conclusion of the Bible study, they just start hearing a loud noise. It's just ringing out. And... Um, the suspect had already wounded a couple of individuals I'm one of the survivors and she said that he had reloaded five different times and um, her son was trying to talk him out of killing people and he he just said I have to do it you rape our women and you take in over our country and you have to go the fact that uh, this took place uh, in a black church uh, obviously also raises questions about a dark part of our history. Uh, this is not the first time that black churches have been attacked. And we know that hatred across races and faiths pose a particular threat to our democracy and our ideals. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Welcome to join our program. You can you can call one 855 400 savage one 855 400 7282. Remember also to visit the website. It's michaelsavage.com. Remember right now, for all the latest news, log on michaelsavage.com and also Countdown to Mecca, Dr. Savage's latest book, A Great Father's Day Gift. It's available right now for you at michaelsavage.com. That was President Obama talking about the horrible shooting that took place in Charleston, South Carolina. We're starting to learn more about the shooter. And uh, we'll tell you about that and a lot more. But let's go out to some of your phone calls. Line two is Adam, and he's listening on WABC in New York. Adam, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hey, good afternoon, John. How are you? Very well, Adam. Go right ahead. Hey, um, I can't believe we're not hearing this, and I know you commented this on earlier. The problem isn't guns necessarily. It's the people that are purchasing them. They're leaving them open 
of people, you know, they know around that are not the healthiest. Like, I can't imagine if I had a son knowing that we're learning right now. And then we saw the same thing with Sandy Hook. How could you be having, you know, if you know your kid is something, you know, possibly something wrong, why would you even in the Sandy Hook we found out that the mother trained him to use guns, and then in the second time we heard, you know, a father buys a 21-year-old kid that he knows has health issues or mental issues? They <laughs> What could they be thinking? Or how could something go wrong, you know, hypothetically? It's, it's, it's unbelievable. And the second thing I wanted to bring up is this isn't race. You know, that, that's a terrible thing to anybody to bring up the race. It's just, unfortunately, you know, you can't stop bad people just to be out there. You know, what are we going to monitor saying, oh, you're a bad person? It's, like I said, I just don't understand why we're not hearing politicians bringing up the parental responsibility that you know that when you have a gun, it's a responsibility just as much as it's a right. You know, you just can't have it open necessarily to you know someone that, God forbid, they get their hands on them, they're dangerous. And, right, but, but, but Adam, if somebody walks into a church and says, I'm here to kill black people, it, it's tough to get away from that. It's it's race motivated. Never mind, he's, you know, got pictures wearing these jackets with flags and patches that have to do with apartheid and Confederate flag. I mean, there's obviously, but Adam, the, the other element is exactly, I think what you said initially, I mean, the father giving him a gun and someone he sounds like a drug addict who's taking this this drug that seems to uh, bring on violent outbursts at him. I mean, we, you know, we where's the responsibility with that? You know, we were the the parents on that. And and then President Obama again, Adam, kind of jumps the I don't mean to say jump the gun, but but jumps the gun as far as immediately talking about you know black churches and also there's too many guns when it it, it possibly could be someone who shouldn't have had any access. Well, not only gun, but more importantly, was was the reaction of the drugs. I know Thank someone you. that's actually on that drug, to be honest with you, and they've had outbursts of rage, and I would think twice of ever putting them around, like, you know, a weapon. It's just, you know, drugs are the main thing behind this as well, too. You know, we need to do a better, a better job of assessing who we let out as far as the public health system. We can't just have, you know, so one of the callers earlier said, we can't just have all these people out there that have mental issues just easily walking around. I mean... I mean, your comment on that. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree with you, Adam. Thank you for the call. one 855 400 You know, as far as the president and other people say, well, you know, it's, it's, it's a matter of guns. There shouldn't be so many guns. Yeah, tell that to the people in, in upstate New York and Vermont that for the past 12 days have been living with their doors locked and uh, sleeping with a gun in their lap because there's, there's two fugitives on the loose because of some idiots at the prison, uh, you know, decided to bring tools in to help them escape. So, yeah, it, it, you're able to say when somebody walks in like that, well, there shouldn't be guns. But like I said, tell that or, or people that are along the border that wake up in the morning and there's illegals cutting through their front, front you know, backyard. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. ABC News headline. Obama says church shooting shows need for reckoning on guns. It is kind of reckless for the president to just be, you know, a reckoning on guns. Uh, no, it, and, and make no mistake about it. It is absolutely horrific. These people go for a Bible study group, and this nut comes in. How about the fact, the reports are that he sat there for an hour. He sat there for an hour. If you take, I mean, I think I think these people, they're almost, they were, they were probably too nice. I mean, I know you're in a church and you're in a Bible study group, but you take one look at him. I, I wouldn't be around this, this guy for like one minute without being like, can I help you? Or like, who are you? I mean, there's, there's these nice, beautiful people in there having a Bible study meeting, and then, you know, a drug addict, bowl haircut, nut walks in and just sits there for an hour and waits till they finish, and then proceeds to, to kill nine of them, and reports are that he said to one person, I, I'm going to spare you because I want you to be able to tell everyone what happened. I mean, at least in South Carolina, they have the death penalty. one 855 400 Savage, do you think that President Obama is bringing the country together on race, or do you think there's more of a racial divide? Do you feel that there was a bigger race problem before President Obama got into office, or a race problem has developed more since he's been in office? I also just saw a headline, race leaders, now they're afraid there's going to be riots uh, tonight or going forward this weekend. I... I uh, I, I mean, the does in the country, it just seems like it's spiral, spiraling out of control right now. Let's go to line five. Leno 
is listening on KKOH in Reno. Leno is on the Savage Nation with John DePietro. Hello, Leno. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, uh, with regard to Obama, as soon as he removes the obstacles for his trial in Fast and Furious, Furious, he'll then have the right to speak to gun violence and not before. The second thing is is that uh, these people concentrate on gun violence. Apparently, they don't care about violence from other sources, which means that we can be terror- terrorized in any other form, but when it comes to guns, they'll be, boy, Johnny on the spot, won't they? That's a, a good point, Leno. And, and as far as the president talking about, you know, other nations and how we compare to other nations and the violence we have, I mean, do you want to trade place with some of the things that are going on in these other nations, uh, whether it be parts of Europe or or France or uh, or anything like that? I mean, I you know, whoever the, the father that gave him, the son, access to the weapon, shouldn't have, whatever drug this uh, Dylan... Roth was on, you know, how did he get it? That should be checked. I mean, there's a number of different people that are, are culprits here, and, and never mind whatever racist uh, beliefs this killer loser had. What do you think? 1-855-400-SAVAGE. There's also a huge debate right now that he should be deemed he's a terrorist is what he is. And I even heard someone earlier on television saying he should be charged with terrorism charges and how come the white media is not calling him a terrorist i don't know because he's he just seems like a deranged lone wolf who who went off for whatever reason we don't know enough about him let's go to line four tom is listening on wjr in detroit tom this is john DePietro and you're up next on the savage nation hello tom Hi, John. Um, I just wanted to mention uh, one of the first uh, bits of information I got um, regarding this tragedy. I seen on uh, on the internet where the um, uh, the police chief had labeled this guy a right wing conservative, a uh, right wing conservative type. This guy had not even been arrested yet. Okay, and this police chief was making this assumption. That scares me a little bit. The other point I wanted to make is that this is what I would call the perfect poker hand for the uh, Obama administration because it, it continues the uh, the racial strife and tension in this country, and it also gives them a little bit of uh, uh, no pun intended, but ammunition to uh, to further the uh, the the gun ban and and what might be coming. And it just seems to me like there the, the part, at least part of this was staged. Mm-hmm. Not going out on a limb saying that, but certainly, I mean. It, 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 stage, it, it, Tom? On. I mean, come on. I, I don't no. I, I don't every time something like this happens, people immediately start saying it was staged. Stage? Who in their right I, I don't believe that. I don't but I mean who in their right mind I, I don't go along with any of that. You know, nine eleven's a conspiracy, uh all this other stuff. Did they put a chip in this guy's head? I mean I, I don't believe that. No, there were they were there were a group of people that gathered for a Bible study meeting and a deranged uh, lunatic lone gunman came in and and killed them for for no reason. A completely sense, senseless murder. They they died a horrific, brutal, horrifying death. And and these were the type of people. It sounds like that were the type of people that you want in a community. You know they they, uh, they never mind. They're in, they're in the middle of of a Bible study meeting. So no, I don't believe that it was planned. One eight five five. 400 Savage is our phone number. You can disagree. I don't mind people calling and disagreeing. 1 855 400 7282. Let's go to line one. Chris is calling on WBAP in Fort Worth. And Chris, from what I understand, you know a little something about this drug. Uh, yes, John. I actually am a pharmacist uh, up in North Texas. Um, and for the most part, uh, I, I assume what they're associating is. Uh, violence and violent outbursts, which is uh, indicative somewhat uh, of the drug, but as of every drug, uh, you hear in a commercial that there's a list of side effects, and aggression is most likely going to be on the list. So I don't think you can really associate uh, what happened this time uh, with that. That said, I I really don't know if they've done a toxicology report on uh, this individual as of yet. I believe his name is Dylan. Uh, so I, I really think it's just uh, one way to sensationalize the story even more, um, just with more noise, not just he killed someone, but he's a drug addict, uh, he's a racist. It, it's all these things sensationalizing it 
a topic where it doesn't really need it. It's, he he killed nine individuals. Well, it, I, I don't know, Chris, if it's, it's not sensationalizing. When something like this happens, you're, you know, he's 21 years old. He didn't know any of them. You know, you're trying to find some kind of motivation for any crime. I mean, you hear something as horrific as this. It's not sensationalizing. You're trying to rationalize what would bring someone to this. So, you know, when we first heard about Sandy Hook, Chris, it was, you know, what what could make someone do something like that? And then you, you learn more about uh, Lanza. And, and it's it was on a path where he was so isolated from the world and the mother was going to have him sent to a special school. And he was just in the basement. And he was also familiar and comfortable handling uh, a, a, a weapon like that, that, you know, he killed her first. I mean, you, it's not sensationalizing. I mean, but the, the information that we le- we then learned about it, it started to come clearer into the picture. So, Chris, doesn't wouldn't it make more sense if, in fact, he was someone that maybe had some kind of a, a drug problem that had a bizarre effect on him? I, I definitely agree with that. Um, right. The part that I disagree with is it's hard to really say since we know very little about it. It's well, okay. we, we we are going to learn about it, though, Chris. Thank thank you for the call. I mean, we are we you know we we are going to learn about it. But when when someone comes in like this, when when you look at um the 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 gunman that was involved with shooting Congressman Gabby Giffords, I mean, as soon as you looked at him, you know, he had that deranged look in his eye. And then the same thing with the gunman in the movie theater in Colorado, dying his hair orange, and I'm the Joker. I mean, all you have to do is what's his name Holmes. All you have to do is look at him. And then you you suddenly realize. But I just wonder, I mean, I know these people are in a Bible study, and they're, maybe they're trying to reach out, and they, they deal with lost souls. But you take one look at this 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 Dylan Roth, and he comes in with the bowl cut, and he's just sitting there with, with patches on that have to do with apartheid, and his car's outside, has a Confederate flag. I, I, I don't know if you just allow him to sit there as you're praying. I, I think that's... You wouldn't be out of line to be like, can I help you for a moment? Or somebody call someone up. I mean, you should be safe in a church. Don't get me wrong. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. Again, this is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, and you are listening to The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You're listening to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in. For Dr. Michael Savage, our phone number, 1-855-400-SAVAGE. Log on to our website, michaelsavage.com. Out to the phones, Rebecca on line 5 is calling on w, from WMAL in our nation's capital. Rebecca, you're on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi. Um, just wanted to say two points. Um, one, Mr. Obama is not uh, helping to heal the nation like he could have. Um, I think he has brought racism to the forefront. Again, it hasn't been this bad since the 70s. Um, but I think because he's, you know, going by his old pal Saul Alinsky that he studied under at Columbia, um, not studied under, but studied all of his writings, as did Hillary Clinton. And, you know, his basic philosophy is to divide and conquer. And uh, that's what Mr. Obama is doing, and I suspect Hillary will continue. Um, I'm also an RN with many years experience and I can tell you this kid was uh, was just mentally ill um, sadly for some reason he levitated to uh, the African American population but this guy was mentally ill just like the guy at Sandy Hook just like the guy uh, in Colorado at the movie theater um, and with the federal government now uh, CMS which is the center Centers for Medicare and Medicaid, um, they are demanding that um, all states start emptying their institutions. Um, so you're going to see uh, people um, roaming in the public that should not be there. Well, that's something to look forward to. Thank you, Rebecca. All right, more ahead. Again, log on to the website, michaelsavage.com. John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're listening to The Savage Nation. 
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, the Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. And you're listening to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're welcome to call into the program. Just dial 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. You can also log on to our website, which is michaelsavage.com, for all the latest news. You can also, just in time for Father's Day, Great Father's Day gift, is Countdown to Mecca, the latest novel, from Dr. Michael Savage. It's available right now if you log on at michaelsavage.com. Well, the big story, of course, the shooting in Charleston, South Carolina, white suspect arrested in the killing of nine at the black U.S. church. Now, ABC News right now, ABC News is reporting that Dalton Tyler, who said he's known the accused, Dylan Roth, for seven months to one year, said he saw the white 21-year-old suspect just last week. Quote, he was big into segregation and other stuff. He said he wanted to start a civil war. He was going to do something like that and then kill himself. Well, obviously, the coward did not kill himself, accused of killing the nine people and then caught four hours away in North Carolina. Tyler said he met Roth a Lexington, South Carolina native through a good friend. He also said Roth's parents, with whom he said the suspect was, quote, on and off, had previously bought him a gun but never allowed him to take it with him until this past week. So the timeline, as we now knew it, Wednesday, around 8 o'clock, 21-year-old Dylan Roth of Lexington, South Carolina, enters the Emanuel AME Church, began shooting church members. Nine people were killed. He apparently began shooting an hour later, so he's there for an hour. Asked who the pastor was, reloads. They believe the weapon was a 45 caliber that he had been given for a, as a birthday present. Sylvia Johnson, a cousin of church pastor Pickney, who was killed in the attacks, says a survivor told her the gunman reloaded five times. Now let's listen. This is Sylvia Johnson. Again, this was a cousin of the pastor. This is what she was told, her recollection of what happened inside that church. At the um, conclusion of the Bible study, they just start hearing a loud noise. It's just ringing out. And um, the suspect had already wounded a couple of individuals. I'm one of the survivors. And she said that he had reloaded five different times. And um, her son was trying to talk him out of killing people. And he... He just said, I have to do it. You rape our women, and you take taking over our country, and you have to go. Well, President Obama spoke from the White House. The fact oh, yeah. that uh, this took place uh, in a black church uh, obviously also raises questions about a dark part of our history. Uh, this is not the first time that black churches have been attacked. And we know that hatred across races and faiths pose a particular threat to our democracy and our ideals. Race just continues to nominate. One headline from Politico, Census Bureau considers dropping race from survey. U.S. Census Bureau is experimenting with eliminating the word, quote, race altogether in its 2020 survey. It's part of the final research push before finalizing it. Any reference to race or origin. Instead, the form will ask, which category describes person one? Respondents will then be able to choose from the usual list of racial and ethnic categories. Folks, race just continues to dominate. And even another headline from Radar Online, NAACP race faker is in talks for a reality show. 
Rachel Dolezal stepped down from her job, but Radar Online has learned she already has a new gig in the works, fielding multiple offers to film a reality show, seeking professional representation after her bombshell interview on the Today Show. Bomb is a good word for it. Even Democrat, well, I shouldn't say even, but all are weighing in on the tragic shooting, including Harry Reid. Think about this. The sanctity of a house of worship was violated as a gunman opened fire at a historically black manual AME church in Charleston, South Carolina. I don't know how else to describe it. This individual was like a sheep and wolf's calling. The thought of people who are in a house of worship being gunned down as they gathered to pray is heart-wrenching, devastating, and is the ultimate act of cowardice and hatred. He is right about that, except I think he had it backwards about the whole sheep and the wolf. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. Let's go to line one. Lisa is listening on KKOB in New Mexico. Lisa, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Lisa. Hi. I agree with the last caller on Obama not handling the nations correctly or healing them. I have noticed a rise in racism, um, not just with the blacks, but also with the whites and Hispanics. Um, There's a lot of examples of that here in Santa Fe, but um, as far as gun control and him talking about that, that's not the answer. I think those parents should be held responsible for giving that guy the gun. Sick, mentally ill people should never be given a gun. And maybe a questionnaire should be given to people wanting to purchase a gun, along with whomever they'll be buying it for. And as far as Obama comparing us to other nations, we never had a problem like this until now, till he came into office. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you for the call, Lisa. You have to admit, I mean, right now, Hooks, can you believe just how bad race relations are in this country? And this, you know, we're not even into the summer months. All hell could break loose now. Let's go to line four. Jody is listening on KSFO. Jody, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Three points. Um, one, the the witness said that he said you're raping our women and taking over our country. This all, already shows a division in his mind, so a distinct race issue in his mind. Being a deranged, in, deranged individual, excuse me, is also the biggest point in this uh, tragedy that I can see. Um, the the gun was just a tool. Um, he could have done it with a chainsaw or, you know, any number of things. It's ridiculous to think that the gun was the problem. Well, you know, a couple of things, Jody. Number one, I mean, there's no doubt, I mean, it was race. When someone walks in and says, I'm here to kill black people, that's that's race. You know, the chainsaw argument, I, I don't, I mean, what? how come we don't hear about that? How come we don't hear about nine people getting killed with a chainsaw? No, I, I think it's it's what one of the, the caller had said, and that is the parents you know, obviously, the more we're learning about the alleged shooter, he's got patches that have to do with the apartheid. He's got a Confederate flag uh, on his license plate. Here's a roommate saying, oh, he was always making racist jokes. He said he wanted to start a civil war. And then he's on this uh, this drug, which they're saying can cause violent outbursts. This This does not sound like someone who should be given a handgun which apparently the father gave him for his birthday. But once again, I mean, all of that said, the president immediately jumps into comparing us to other nations, immediately trying to turn this into a, a gun debate, when a, a big part of this, I think, is the, the element of race that's going on right now. Do you think the president is healing the racial divide in the country or making it worse? I've yet to see a, situ- a situation yet that we've had, either the riots or the police shootings or anything like that, where he's done anything to make things better, meaning the president. It always seems to inflame it and make it worse. What do you think? 1-855-400-SAVAGE. Let's, let's go to um, line 8. Jeremy is listening on WBAP in Fort Worth. Jeremy, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Jeremy. Hello. Uh, just full disclosure, I'm a mental health professional in Fort Worth, and one of the things that's, that's that I just want to kind of point out is that the the overwhelming vast majority of racists don't kill. 
the overwhelming majority of people who are on drugs or abuse drugs don't kill. The problem is the overwhelming majority of killers kill. I mean, this, that's the issue here. You know, I guarantee you, at that church, the moment that person walked in, people felt uneasy. But what do you do about it? See, that's, that's the problem. And on, and on some level, collectively, we have to take personal responsibility for how vulnerable we are simply from other human beings. And as far as comparing ourselves to other countries, <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, every other country, I mean, we're, we're the least racist country on the planet for the most part. I mean, if you really look at it, and if you look at the violence towards between races and towards races in other countries, it may look a little bit different, but it's certainly much worse than it is here. The problem here is that we're so vulnerable, and, you know, our, our most vulnerable people live within gun-free zones. Now, I'm not saying that's the issue, but what I am saying is that people have to take personal responsibility for their own safety. We cannot rely on other people. We can't, you know, the overwhelming desire to have a reason why this happened is distracting us from the problem. Period. Jer Jeremy, you know what's interesting? You, you know, we, we, we when we talk about profiling, it, it always seems to be they, they feel, you know, whites are profiling, you know, blacks, African Americans. But, the, the, you know, there could have been a profiling on the other side, and that is if you and I are sitting there and, and we're black and somebody walks in and they have a, a gaunt look in their eye and they have that type of bull haircut, which would, you know, and, and, and he's wearing uh, patches about the apartheid, and, and he's got something in his pocket, and he's just acting odd, I, I would immediately profile him. I mean, the, everyone talks about the profiling. All of these gunmen, thank you for the call, Jeremy, that we've seen in the news, whether it be Michael Lanza or the, the you know, Holmes, James, James Holmes in Colorado, I don't know about you, but I, I profile people constantly as far as how they look and how they act. And, and uh, it, it, you know, he came in there and sat there for an hour. And, and didn't, again, I feel awful, and again, this is a, a Bible study, but didn't he seem odd, just kind of sitting there? And again, if you look at just the way he looks, he, he would make you uncomfortable. If I was working in a store and he came in, I would immediately be like, can we help you or, or get security? Just on, you know, I don't care that he's white. It's just the way he's acting and the way he looks. The same way, if you look at the, the shooter, uh, the killer from in Arizona that shot congressman gabby gifford the, the moment you saw that guy he looked nuts and people that knew him around the campus said he was he, he was he was odd and how about if uh, james holmes sat next down next to you in a movie theater i'd want to move my seat i i don't the, you know the profiling to me it's not always gonna be a race it can be just behavioral you know the look they have in their eye no matter what color they are one eight five five 400 Savage, 1 855 400 7282. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. More of your phone calls ahead because this is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now 855 400 Savage, 855 400 7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800 B U I C O I N. I am very, very pleased to announce that we have uh, made an arrest in this case. We've arrested. Dylan Roth, R-O-O-F, uh, from Lexington, South Carolina. Approximately 30 minutes ago, he was arrested in Shelby, North Carolina, during a traffic stop. I've had to make statements like this too many times. Communities like this have had to endure tragedies like this too many times. We don't have all the facts, but we do know that, once again, innocent were killed in part because someone who wanted to inflict harm had no trouble getting their hands on a gun. Now is the time for mourning and for healing. But let's be clear. At some point, we as a country will have to reckon with the fact that this type of mass violence does not happen in other advanced countries. You're listening to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. That is President Obama speaking earlier in the day. Again, the phone number, one 400 savage Talking about the tragic shooting in Charleston, South Carolina, in the church. So let's go out to line eight. Doug is listening on WTMA in South Carolina. Doug, you're up on The Savage Nation. Hello. 
Hi, thank you for taking my call. Um, as most of the nation, we were very shocked and deeply hurt with the loss of our our fellow citizens here. Um, I do know that uh, our company that I work at, a major Fortune 500 company, very diverse work environment, and we all felt this impact. And uh, we probably have 50% black, 50% white people there. And uh, at 3 o'clock today, we went out and prayed together for the healing of our nation. And it wasn't, it was about a sick man. And uh, the fact that at least what we got out here is, you know, he, he was a deranged individual. And uh, I'm offended in that the President of the United States is using this as a political um, opportunity to push his agenda um, when he's looking at not having all the facts. He's already made statements about how easy it is to get a gun. Well, he got his gun from his father. We don't know why, but uh, he did. Doug, did you ride by the church early? Are you familiar with the churches? Yes, I am familiar. Uh, that's in downtown Charleston, and I don't go downtown too much. It's, it's sort of very congested and hard to get to. So. Do you see uh, Do you see a number of people riding around with the Confederate flag on the license plate? Um. Not as much as I thought I would, and, and I moved out here from California about 13 years ago. And the ones that I do know, and, you know, we call them a bubba, um, it, it's, it's about heritage. And I'll tell you one thing that I found very interesting when I moved out here. There is less racism in South Carolina than there is in California or in the Northeast. I have seen more interracial couples. I have seen more interracial events than I've ever seen in my life, and I was quite surprised. Hmm. Doug, thank you for the call. Let me go to line four, and that's Peter listening on WTMA. He's also in South Carolina. Peter, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Oh, hey, John. Thanks for taking my call. So, Welcome. Uh, I just wanted to make three quick uh, gimmies and one unanswered question to this horrible event that's happened last night. Uh, I'm going I'm to ask you to hold, because I don't want to cut you off, and I want to hear about it. But we want to give you enough time, and we'll give you enough time as well. Don't forget our website. It's michaelsavage.com. Again, 1-855-400-SAVAGE. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're listening to The Savage Nation. At the um, conclusion of the Bible study, they just start hearing a loud noise. It's just ringing out. And... Um, the suspect had already wounded a couple of individuals, I'm one of the survivors, and she said that he had reloaded five different times. And um, her son was trying to talk him out of killing people, and he, he just said, I have to do it. You rape our women, and you're taking over our country, and you have to go. You're listening to the Savage Nation. That was someone who spoke with an eyewitness, apparently in the church in Charleston, South Carolina. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You can call into the program 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. Don't forget about our website. It's michaelsavage.com. You can log on and get the latest news. Some of the headlines also right now on the website, Michael Savage Countdown to Mecca, but get the latest headlines. Charleston Shooter was on drug linked to violent outbursts. Also, why doesn't hypocrite Pope sell Vatican art to feed the poor? In Oregon, 15-year-olds can get taxpayer-funded sex changes without parental consent. Also on the website, Sasha and Malia Obama hit the shops in Milan after jetting in from London on Air Force One. And then also suspected ISIS sympathizer attacks New York City agents. How about more terrorists in U.S. in the U.S. expected ahead of Independence Day? Those are just some of the headlines that you'll see once you log on to the website at michaelsavage.com. And then again, all the different uh, links connected with those headlines. Some of the headlines on the Drudge Report. White man kills nine at black church. Gunman captured. Gunman sat in the prayer meeting for an hour before opening fire. Killer speared one person. Tell world what happened. Black activists fear riots. Another killer 
on psych drugs. You can also see some of the latest headlines. Brian Williams, no nightly news. Instead, did they fire Brian Williams? Worse, banished to MSNBC with a pay cut. And then a lot of different headlines on the Drud Report regarding those running for president. Uh, headlines about the Pope demanding climate change. And also, how about the CNN live shot interrupted by hecklers? There's more and more of that. Again, those are just some of the headlines from the Drudge Report. Let's go back to the phones. Line four. Speaking of South Carolina, Peter, once again, is in South Carolina listening to the Savage Nation on WTMA. Peter, once again, go right ahead. You're on the Savage Nation, Peter. Thanks for having me back, John. I just want to make quick, uh, three quick points, and it kind of give me to a lot of questions that are going around. Uh, and one that I want to ask that nobody seems to be asking. Uh, one, we know he was mental. I mean, uh, you give you give him, you know, a gun to a monkey, he's going to end up shooting people for himself. Two, it was definitely a political issue. He asked who the pastor was, knowing that he was a state senator, and executed him. You know, uh, third, it was a, it's a racial issue. I mean, the guy did make comments, you know, that he made that saying that you know it's got to happen because. He felt that blacks were taking over the country. Uh, my fourth question that nobody seems to ask. What's that? It's why Why did he choose Charleston, South Carolina? There's got to be a reason why he drove, you know, two and a half hours and picked that church, knowing that the pastor would be in there on a Wednesday night. That's the I, question I want to ask, and nobody seems to be asking it. I Thank you for the call, Peter. I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe we'll we'll find out. Uh, I know that when he was visiting a childhood friend, they wondered why he was in that area. Let's stay in South Carolina. Line 8, Brian is also listening on WTMA. Brian, this is John DePietro, and you're on the Savage Nation. Hello, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. I can answer that for you. Wednesday nights are usually uh, prayer nights in a lot of churches around here. Also, uh, the uprising of Denmark Vesey in 1822, he was a member of that church. And the church is burnt down afterwards and rebuilt. Now, Brian, did you know any of the victims from this? Yes. One of them was a friend of mine. We used to work together at the library. Um, I used to do programs for her. I just spoke with her last week when I ran into her at the library. Oddly enough, I was down there across the street from the church about five or six hours before this happened. I just happened to, I'm a tour guide, and I was walking, I was down there with some folks, and I was even talking about the church. Uh, it's, it's one of our landmarks. It's the oldest AME church in the South. And uh, Brian, what can you tell us about your friend? I mean, it sounded like a, a wonderful group of people. This is just horrific what happened. She was an outstanding person. She was a good, truly a good person. Uh, an example to others, uh, it's a void. It's just an absolute void. Uh, and uh, I didn't find out till a few hours ago that happened, that was, she was involved, but I had this, I, know, I had a bad feeling about something. Did you? Uh, well, what else can you tell us, Brian? Anything else that we should know about what happened? Well, the gentleman said a few people back saying, yeah, that it's, it's not that much of a, of a conflict down there, and there isn't. Uh, I've lived here most of my life. I've also lived all over this country and overseas. And I can tell you, I've lived in other places where, yeah, you, you, <laughs> if they had the gun, they'd shoot you. Um, you know, it's, it's not the gun thing. It's just the person thing. You know, I mean, for crying out loud, if, if David could kill Goliath with a rock, then let's outlaw rocks. Well, at the, at the same, Brian, thank you for the call. I mean, at the same time, though, I mean, it, it's not this business of he wanted to, allegedly told ABC News. Uh, he's uh, a friend of his told ABC News. Oh yeah, Dylan, the accused shooter. He wanted to start a race war. He, uh, you know, someone riding around with a Confederate flag on their license plate, and uh, wearing these apartheid jackets. You, you you don't see that. I've also traveled all over the country. That that's something that you see in the South. You don't see that in other parts of the country. You don't see that in the Northeast. You don't see that in the Midwest. That that is something I, I don't. That is something that you see in the South. Let's go to line one. Tyler is listening on KKOH in Reno. Tyler, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Tyler. Hi. Uh, you're so wrong about that Confederate flag thing. I I can't believe you're saying that sort of thing. It's what am I wrong about? 
I'm telling you, the I'm a life member of the Sons of Confederate Veterans. That's a group of about 50,000 citizens from the age of 21 on up to about 90. Which part am I right or wrong about? Well, the, the people that display the Confederate flag, uh, in uh, my experience, have been uh, people who are very in touch with their traditions and their culture. Traditions? And the Sons of Confederates spend a great deal of time and money preserving cemeteries and repairing vandalism to monuments all across this country. What part was I wrong about? The only place you see that flag is in the South. Not true at all. I Where do you see the Confederate flag? To live in Wisconsin, and people routinely display the battle flag, uh, which is the one that you typically heard that's got the X with the stars on it. And they, uh, when I asked them, I said, you know, are you folks from the South? And uh, in most cases, they weren't from the South. They just... Uh, just losers? The battle flag as being a way of expressing uh, what they would call typically the rebel spirit. So if so if you're if you're a group of nine black people and you're sitting there and somebody comes in with a weird look in their eye and a bowl cut and uh, they have a Confederate flag in their license plate, you're saying that they those people have nothing to worry about. If someone is, uh, if I were black and somebody showed up and they got a Confederate flag in the license plate, I I would get nervous the same way uh, if you were traveling overseas and there were a group of Pakistanis on your plane. Well, that's just prejudice on your part. No, no, no. How is that pre- prejudice? That's not prejudice. Yes, you don't even know what words you're talking about. You're talking no. about somebody having a thought in their head based on their ethnicity, and that's the definition of prejudice. No, it is not. It's it's called profiling. Somebody has a battle. Who commits the acts? You're totally wrong. You don't even know what you're talking about. Well, if you think that. What do you, what, what do you, enough. Thank you, Tyler. That's not, that's not racist. Why do you think then this, they screen people like that at the airport? There's a certain profile that they look for. It's called profiling, and it can work both ways. I mean, as much as everyone wants to talk about profiling, as far as white people profiling blacks, I mean, people profile other people. Let me ask you, when those people were were in Texas, and you had the motorcycle gangs rolling in, uh, and somebody said, I feel a little nervous. Should the, did somebody else say, what, what reason would you have to be nervous on? Why, because all these people are coming in with all the tattoos and the motorcycle gang? Why, is there going to be a problem? Yeah, nine shot dead in the sports bar. Or were there more than that? There's, not, there's nothing wrong with sometimes using senses. Yeah, people in Wisconsin had a, had a Confederate flag. I mean, how desperate can you be? But birds of a feather. Remember, remember that, birds of a feather. So if you're hanging around with losers in Wisconsin that have a Confederate flag, that is not. You, in, in any situation, if there is some kind of a terrorist threat, there, there is a link most of the time, most of the time, and I was going to say on an airplane, of Middle Eastern men. That was the hijackers. Now, I know people like to say, well, what about a Timothy McVeigh? But we're talking about predominantly of what, what someone falls into. And... and Profiling goes on all the time. But again, I'm not talking about people think it's it's uh, racial profiling just just uh, applies to someone of color. So this guy just when he was at the mall, he was making people uncomfortable. The Colorado shooter by his actions made people uncomfortable. The uh, shooter in Arizona that shot Congresswoman Gabby Giffords, you look at him. Yeah, he's white, and he was a nut looking like that. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. Line 9 is Ginger, listening on WDRC in Connecticut. Ginger, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Ginger. Hi, how are you? Thank Very well, Ginger. Go right ahead. First of all, my heart goes out to everybody and all the families, and uh, you'll be in my prayers. Secondly, I just feel as though the president, we don't care about him being tired. He needs to come up with a sound solution before he nationally gets on the air and starts, you know, just saying this, that, and the other. He's adding fuel to the fire. That's pretty much all I have to say. Well, you know, Ginger, there's been, this has been racial tension building with all the protests, whether it be in Ferguson or Baltimore. 
And I, I don't know what's going to happen now. I don't think anyone does. But when, when you have uh, a, a deranged lone gunman that told, apparently, according to ABC News, told a, a friend that he wanted to start a civil war and walks into a black Bible study group and massacres nine innocent people, there's going to be uh, there's going to be some some uh, fallout from that, to say the very least. I, I don't I don't know what's going to happen this summer, but but I, I I agree with Ginger. The president does not seem to be bringing the country together. The race situation seems to be getting worse. The racial divide. Let's go to line three. Mike is in Phoenix listening on KFNX. Mike, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Mike. Hello. You know, on Tuesday there was a report that was released that said 121 Americans that had been killed by illegal aliens that were let out of prison by Obama, and there's scant news coverage. Now we have nine people killed in a church, and it's wall-to-wall coverage, and the usual, you know, knee-jerk reaction that the ban all the firearms. And it's right on cue for their summer of rage. I know when uh, Obama was over in this G7 deal, and they asked him, in it, but he said that they had no complete strategy for fighting ISIS. But now all of a sudden he's got a complete strategy for this issue. Well, uh, you know, I haven't heard about uh, that element of it, Mike. Now, listen, whenever someone gets killed or illegal aliens, you say kill Americans. I mean, it does make news, but you, you, you can't say that a, a young 21-year-old white gunman allegedly walks into a black church of a Bible study group and says, I'm here to kill black people, and then think that, you know, why? of course it's going to be major news, and it's going to remain major news uh, for, for quite some time. 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. Don't forget our, about our website. It's michaelsavage.com. Again, this is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, and this is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Dr. Savage will be back tomorrow. We'll be back tomorrow taking your phone calls at 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. As always, the website is michaelsavage.com. You know, President Obama talking about these types of shootings don't happen in other countries. Well, we have France where the Islamists murdered 12 members of the staff of the Charlie Hebdo magazine. How about July 2011? Norway, 77 killed. September 2008, Finland, 10 people killed. You also have, in April 2002, in Germany, how about the guy been expelled from school, kills 13 teachers, two former classmates and and a policeman. We're going to find out more about um, about the alleged shooter in Charleston, South Carolina. But this it, it's not just this just goes on in America. Let's go to line seven. Robert is listening on KSFO. Robert, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hey, John. Uh, great job filling in. Thank you. Make- Doctor, we'll be back tomorrow. We'll be back tomorrow. Just, just wanted to make a couple of points here. If you type in any web browser, uh, violent crime drops... 50% in the USA, you will see that over the last 20, 30 years, depending upon what type of uh, studies you look at, the crime has dropped dramatically from gun murders to violent gun crimes within the United States. But yet it's like this administration just pushes this narrative nonstop that gun violence is up, gun violence is up. And even if you look uh, on the Internet and you do searches and you, you do a search to see whether or not gun violence is up in the United States, you see mainstream media all across the United States just pushing this non gun violence is out of control. Right. No, nope. and it, it certainly uh, came out of the White House. Again, check out the website, michaelsavage.com. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You've been listening to The Savage Nation. Savage.